I had exposure to this as a resident in training. I actually encountered probably my first really serious issue with obesity with a childhood friend who, when I moved to this small town, uh, weighed about 175 pounds as a high school sophomore. When he graduated, was over 450 pounds with severe morbid obesity. And looking back, it was an eating disorder. He actually had a problem with food. Uh, he never sought treatment for that. I mean, he lost his life in his early 40s from non Hodgkin's lymphoma as a result of the obesity. Uh, I could focus on the surgical aspects. I could talk about the medical treatment. I see the extremes. I see patients that come in that otherwise are not going to survive without having something implemented and done. Uh, my focus with the society from the national level has been about access. We don't have treatment of obesity. Obesity is not treated by most insurance companies. It's not treated by Medicare. CMS, for example, does not qualify, does not identify obesity as a disease. We have an epidemic, folks. A paper came out this past week that said that by in eight years, the cost for treating obesity will be $388 billion. 43% of the U.S. adults will be obese in eight years. Can we wait? Can we wait for the children, the adolescents and young adults that are being sent to me that need help? We need to implement treatment policies at all levels. Society has to change. Let me ask a question. If you want to raise your hand, you can. How many of you have had fast foods in the last 72 hours? There's a few. How many of you have walked 20 minutes a day for five out of the last seven days? Very few of you. I asked that in a room of full of health professionals, 300 professionals, and only 10 people will remain standing after they asked those two questions. We have to change. We've been to Washington. We've been to, and spoken to the healthcare policy liaisons for Senator Durbin, Senator Baucus, Senator Reed, Enzi, Senator Lincoln from our home state, also Speaker Pelosi. We've asked for treatment of obesity to be an essential benefit in any health care plan. And what I'm told is we're a special interest group. Two people said, we can't legislate surgery. And I said, did surgery be, was it mentioned in any of the language we just gave you? No, it's not. Treatment of obesity should be a benefit at all levels. I see the extremes. We're facing a burden economically and socially in our country. There are over 200,000 people in this state that are on disability right now. Of these 61 patients that were Medicare eligible or age that had surgery through my practice in the last year, 80% of those patients are under the age of 65 on Medicare disabled. In 2007, nationally, there were 10,000 similar cases performed. Of that group, 75% are under the age of 65 on Medicare. Can we afford to take care of a 25 or 30 year old for the next 30 or 40 years? Disabled in Medicare? No. We can't afford the, 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 the cost. We can't afford the burden that is being sent to us because of prescription <laughs> drugs, the disability, and the, and the chronic burden that's out there. There are very few treatments we have for patients with severe obesity, class 3 obesity, which I see routinely. You know, some patients will respond to medical treatment they can lose weight down and keep the weight off. But when I see most patients that get, by the time they get to me, they're requiring surgical intervention. It's not a quick fix. And we're very careful to tell patients this requires a lifetime of change. Behavior modification, improved exercise. As Dr. Young mentioned, you have to address the psychological issues because there's a lot of overlay and a lot of in patients' backgrounds that you have to address and you have to ask about. We need to address the treatment of obesity in our society. Our congressional delegation needs to hear this. We encourage patients every time we have class and seminar, contact your congressman because it's not being treated, it's not being addressed. It's, we can mention to the primary care physicians, you need to address this with your patients, but they don't get paid for the, even the counseling that goes on. <clears throat> They don't get reimbursed for that. So if they're not going to get that reimbursement, they're not going to see that, it's going to be very difficult to push that to the primary care physicians. The dietitians, 
it's very difficult when you send a patient to a dietitian to get reimbursement for that. That's a factor that has to be addressed. We have to address treatment of obesity across our country. We can't wait 10, 15 more years. You know, we've had a number of policy summits in Washington. You know, they talk about the childhood obesity. Dr. Carmona at the Stop Obesity Alliance press conference September 9th said, you know, the CDC, the CDC researchers came to him in 2004, 2005 and said, this generation of children will not outlive their parents. We can't wait. 80% of these obese kids become obese adults. You know, the BMI testing that, that Arkansas did was the first in the country. And it's imperative that this continue. Because when you look at the other data that's out here, the NHANES studies, the National Health Nutrition Estimate surveys, they were samples. They didn't actually go out and measure the BMI in all the children. And so by just sampling, they didn't see the total picture. Arkansas, I think, is a snapshot of the problem we have across our country. If you look at the CDC map in terms of obesity, there's one state in the country that has less than 20% obesity, and that's Colorado. There are six states now that have over 30% obesity, and three of them border Arkansas. 